Good morning, good morning, my beautiful people. Today it is day 10 on the Via Jeveniensis, of course. Leaving town early, I left the hotel at 6 in the morning looking for uh, my breakfast and I went to the first uh, boulangerie and it was closed. Went to a bar across the street that, that opened at 6.30 and while I was enjoying my cappuccino, the lady told me a truth that I have forgotten and that it shook me to my core. Most of the businesses between August 1st and August 15th close here in France. I went through that nightmare uh, four years ago and I cannot believe that I forgot about it. So yes, that would be a major tip that I will give you because now the limited support that I had just went down to the bare minimum. I went to the bakery once it opened, got my uh, chocolatine or pan of chocolate and I also got a sandwich because I don't know if there's anything going to be open in today's stage. Today's stage, on paper at least, is 22 kilometers, just like yesterday with just a few rolling hills along the way. It's supposed to be, I think, like a 300 meter elevation gain overall, so not too bad. Sun is already coming out, the temperature is cool for the time being, but today it's going to get to 90 degrees Fahrenheit and tomorrow, 100. Now, over the last uh, few days, I started to notice an uptick in crosses. I've seen more and more, which is always uh, great. Yesterday, I even saw one with the year I was born in. And as you can see down below, that's where the plains are, the fields, the agricultural fields. We're not walking down there. We're actually walking a little bit up here in the mountain, not too far away. Today, we're going to cross from this side of the mountain to the other side walk in the plains for a little bit and then we climb up another one similar to this one those are the two small climbs that we have today about 300 meters and then tomorrow will be the last day that we're kind of walking in the plains and then entering the mountains once again so if you compare it to the Camino Frances we start with the Pyrenees then we enter La Meseta where we are right now and then finally as we go into Galicia you have to climb once again if you have to do longer stages, this is the section where I recommend you do your 30 kilometer days or close, depending on how far you walk. Unfortunately for me, since I really wasn't prepared, I left all the long days towards the end. So it's going to happen in the mountains and I'm pretty sure it's going to happen in the rain. I've only had one rainy day so far on the trip and it was a bad one, I have to say, one of the worst ones in a long time. So let's hope we don't have a repeat of that. Let's do something new. Let's uh, talk while I walk. Since I switched over to the Canon uh, camera, away from the stabilizer with the phone, there's no way for me to walk and have a steady shot, except with this camera, with the Insta360 ONE X2. So the morning has been pretty easy. Once I went over the hill or the mountain, I made it into the flat areas, the flat grounds, the, 
the agricultural uh, fields, made it through a couple of towns. One did have stores that were open, which was a shock to me. And you know, it's much appreciated. Didn't need any supplies because of course I have my sandwich. And then I made the second climb of the day, which was the, the toughest one. Then again, it was only like a couple of blocks going uphill. It's been very, very windy up here. I don't know why. <laughs> In the fields, it was all exposed to the elements, exposed to the sun. And then up here, I have a little bit of protection. I've been using my umbrella throughout the day, strategically, whenever it's uh, very uh, sunny, my legs are just burned to a crisp from walking. <laughs> Over the last uh, three weeks or so, I'm getting sunburn even though I use uh, sunscreen, the umbrella, I haven't used the hat that much on uh, this uh, trip. Almost uh, to town, I think the rest of the way is going to be through forests like this. I'm already on top of the mountain and uh, I should be getting there around 12, 12.30. I have already walked. Let's see, let's see. It's 11 o'clock, by the way. I have already walked 18 kilometers. So it was supposed to be 22 or so. So I probably have about an hour just to get there. Water sources wise, most of them have just been the bathrooms that I found along the way. Usually when you see like a, one of these uh, small city halls in towns, they have a bathroom there. So go ahead and uh, use them if you need to and also get the water from the tap. Sometimes if you see like a sports center or like a field, they usually have a water tap somewhere for the people that are there working out. So those are the little things, the little details. Churches, for the most part, they also have water. But if not, this most of the time there's a cemetery right next to it. And the cemeteries, of course, that they do have water because it's the same water that they use to water the flowers in there. So yeah, let's make it to town. Let's hope that there's a restaurant there. I already have my sandwich that I brought with me. I've been snacking away throughout the morning. So when I get to town, I need to have uh, lunch and uh, you know, fall back in the routine that you guys know so well. So here I am at the Jeet where I'm staying today. I got to this town at 1222 after walking for like 22 kilometers. And uh, this is like a very tiny town, like a speck with really nothing to do here. So I'm going to be staying in this Jeet the entire day. I got a stamp when I made it to uh, the church. It was the first stamp and only of the day. And the best thing about this place is that it has its own bar downstairs. So I had lunch. I had uh, my first big omelet with a salad and a beer and of course a glass of water. And I was there with another pilgrim that I've been seeing on and off. And we finally got to talking. He's from Iran, but he's been living here in France for like the last 20 years. So he speaks a little bit of English and he was telling me that he's mostly... Uh, while camping he has uh, all his gear and he likes to walk in the morning take a break during the midday usually by a river where he does everything including laundry and then he walks in the afternoon so yeah talking to other pilgrims and while I'm on the subject this is really not my room but my room is back there and it's kind of dark because all the windows are closed there are three other pilgrims that are coming here today so today for dinner is going to be four of us. I can also see all the mountains that I have to climb in the distance, the ones that are where we're heading. It is like 1 p.m. and it is starting to get hot. So I'm going to go ahead, take a shower, do laundry. You know the routine. So I guess I'm all alone in this albergue because the other three pilgrims didn't really show up. But it's okay. I'm here with a group of uh, French that speak just a little bit of English, just enough to be able to communicate. So they told me that dinner was at 7. I kept, came down at 7 o'clock. 
there was a plate, an empty plate on the table for me. I sat down, I didn't get a menu, I didn't get to order food. They just brought out a plate of pork, potatoes and a salad. I just spent the entire afternoon in my room, up there, the one with the open window, just watching The Walking Dead. Never seen that series before and for some reason I decided to watch it here. I guess I kind of feel like The Walking Dead here in the countryside. So I've seen already like five episodes. So if I can't sleep tonight, you know why. Tomorrow breakfast is at 7 in the morning. So not as early as I would like to head out. But there's really nothing around here for me to have breakfast. So that would be uh, what I would do. I would just come down at 7 and then start walking. I think it's about 19 kilometers similar to today or, or actually even shorter and then uh, you know taking it one step at a time or one day at a time six more days until Le Puy and Valais like two until I start climbing into the mountains once again it kind of feels like I'm about to or I'm getting closer to Galicia you, you guys know if you don't the Camino Frances how it is that climb into Osebredo that's what I have in the near future I see the mountains over there. Those are the ones that I'm going to be tackling. And, uh, you know, at least we got blue skies. Temperature went up, slowly came down. And I think tomorrow is going to be the same. So see you guys tomorrow at 7. <laughs>